Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is going to be a rather random video um, that I sort of came up with. Uh, I figured I'd show you why it is that you use uh, flux when soldering. So, here I have a copper plate. Uh, it's pretty heavily oxidized, which is why it's this color. Actually, you can sort of see that there's like, you know, a bunch of different colors to it. This is a copper plate that I, I just heated it up with the, the hot air. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, that got made it oxidize a lot faster, and that's why it's this color now. For comparison, here's what it would look like if I hadn't done that. Right, you can see the, the color difference is, uh, yeah, pretty significant. Anyway, so we're going to take my soldering iron over here. Uh, and I have a bit of solder on there. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to see what happens if I try, <laughs> try to solder it, which is a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, actually, let's grab this little bit of solder over here off of the hot plate. Anyway, and uh, yeah, this this really, like, it, it just, it doesn't stick at all. So, uh, let's uh, try and prove that a bit. Here's a great big blob of solder that, yeah, and, and you can see just, like, with the oxide layer on this plate, th this is just... Yeah, this, this is getting nowhere. So let's add some flux to this, shall we? So, I use this stuff. Um, this is the Chipquick SMD 4300. It's a water washable, no clean tack flux. Ideal for electronics. Uh, only issue is, it does come in... Uh, <laughs> like, you can get it in two different colors for some reason, and the pale yellow version of this is terrible. Or, well... It's not terrible. Like, you can still work with it, it just doesn't last very long. So anyway, we're gonna add some flux. And now we're gonna try solder and... Yeah, much, much better, right? Like, immediately, just the difference is... And anywhere the flux goes, like... Uh, and now you can see that I've actually sort of used up a lot of the flux, so, yeah, like if, uh, yeah, you can see the, the boundary, right? Like, with flux, no flux, with flux, no flux. So, quite a difference. Um, and also, I want to show you what it looks like if we don't actually add any tin to it, so you can actually see how the flux eats away the oxide layer. Just going to put some flux over there, and we're going to hit it with the hot air station a little bit. And you can see how the flux just eats away at the oxide, right? So, yeah, anyway, um, that's why you use flux when soldering. Uh, and it does the same thing for the actual, like, the, the solder itself that also uh, oxidizes, you know, in the atmosphere. So... Even if you're not, like, you know, this is, like, a really exaggerated demonstration because I'm taking a, a, just a copper plate and I've intentionally oxidized it. And then it's like, yeah, you, you can't solder to that, like, at all. But, actually, yeah. So over here where the flux was, yeah, we, we can, you know, you can see that it does actually wet. But... Elsewhere on, on here, it's just, yeah, like, a whole lot of... Well, I mean, if you scrape scrape at it a bit, it'll eventually get through. Um, oh, yeah, so that's why you use flux when, when soldering. Um, it basically just prevents everything from oxidizing, and without the oxide sort of getting in the way of everything, um, you get good soldering results. Whereas if you don't use flux, your solder oxidizes, your copper pads oxidize, and nothing will stick. <laughs> No, so, uh, yeah, um, hopefully this is somewhat useful, um, because, uh, yeah, I've, I just sort of thought about this, like, because you hear a lot of people always say, oh, you need to use flux when soldering if you want to get good results, but I don't think I've ever really seen a good demonstration of why that happens, and so I figured I'd set this little demo up. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found this somewhat interesting, 
And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon, I have a Teespring store, I have a Bandcamp. There's links to all of those down in the description below. If you check them out, that would be much appreciated. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.